All right, what's up, guys? It's K Rod here. I'm back with another good video. Um, I wanted to talk about Terrence Crawford's um, a very weird plan of what he wants to do, and I'm going to explain why Terrence Crawford needs to go to PBC, and he needs to take the Manny Pacquiao fight as soon as possible, or fight Sean Porter to solidify legacy. Um, so let's talk about his crazy, you know, scuffle with, with Top Rank. Uh, Top Rank, um, hosted by legendary promoter Bob Arum. Um, obviously he's not legendary. He's, he's just a very weird promoter, <laughs> similar to a Don King. Well, actually, no, he's not even close to Don King. Don King is, you know, he's a racist, but he, he actually sold bigger fights <laughs> But, I mean, Bob Arum, no. Bob Arum is trash, but... Yeah, Terrence Crawford is with Top Rank with Bob Arum. And uh, after Terrence Crawford's recent fight over Kell Brook and a fourth-round stoppage, um, it was pretty set and clear of what Terrence Crawford wants to do in his next uh, fight. He uh, publicly stated he wants Manny Pacquiao and then Errol Spence, but... There's something that is throwing a bit of questions up in the air of what Terrence Crawford is trying to do. Because he does say he wants these names, but yet he forgets that he has mandatories for his WBO belt, i.e. For, like, for guys like Sean Porter. See now, this is going to be a very tricky position that Crawford's going to have to take because... If Manny Pacquiao were to really take 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 the fight deal with Crawford, which originally there was going to be a fight date set up in the Middle East, I think out in Dubai, um, between him and Pacquiao, but I guess some Board of Health bullshit came in, you know, like they always do with all this COVID nonsense to say, no, the fight has to be off, so it can't be set up. It's like, dude, are you serious? Like, there's fights being 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 shown out in Europe or whatever parts of the world that's allowing it. So, you know, what difference does it make to have it out there? Maybe have it in Saudi Arabia? I don't know, which I don't... Saudi Arabia is a crappy nation, but have it have it somewhere like Dubai or United Arab... Yeah, United Arab um, Emirates. I would like, I would like to see that. that. That's a more, you know... That's a more fighter-friendly venue to have a crowd, if there is one. I'm pretty sure there could be one. Um, you know, I definitely would pay to see that. But, you know, if anything, if Pacquiao could just give Crawford the fight, this could all be settled and set in stone between him and Errol Spence. Because, you know, Errol Spence... He's going for Pacquiao after Danny Garcia. I, I I don't care what anybody else says. Errol Spence is going after Manny Pacquiao for this fight. And for, like for any of you Pac Pacroid, Pacroid um fanboys, let me tell you, Pacquiao is done. The reason why he has this belt is for the same reason why any fighter is staying in the game, knowing that he or she is are is already done. They're just there to get a paycheck. They're not there to actually solidify a legacy. Gamboa, he did the same thing against Devin Haney. Even though Gamboa, he did not put up a great performance, but he was just there to survive. But he basically gave Devin Haney a decent fight, and Devin Haney got better from that fight. That doesn't mean Devin Haney is a lackluster performance boxer. It's the fact that Gamboa, he used his veteran tactics against Devin, and he knew... Devin's going to come in to try to beat the living crap out of him. That doesn't mean Devin is a bad boxer. It, it just means that Gamboa, he was just there for the paycheck. But with Manny Pacquiao, he's taking fights against guys like Keith Thurman, Adrian, Broner, guys that he knows that he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, and he's going to take advantage of what he sees in front of him, which, I mean, something just tells me, like, Manny Pacquiao, he's the king of the catchweights. He'd be fighting guys at a catchweight, and then I'm not so sure if he got, you know, tested for any VADA or Olympic-style drug testing, 
which is kind of question questionable within his past fights against guys that I know he probably would be in a fair fight, but I doubt it. But even guys like Miguel Cotto, that, that's a question mark. Even Floyd Mayweather said that Pacquiao really didn't beat Cotto. You know, you had to cheat in some way to actually beat him to that level. Yeah, I would I would actually need to make a video about that. And, uh, you know, like any of his other previous fights, he he's always fought his main opponent, his top, you know, higher level opponents at a catch weight. And I just don't like that at a Pacquiao because Pacquiao, I understand where he's coming from, but the execution is so shitty. Um, excuse my French. Because Pacquiao does not have the level of skill that he claims to have in the tank when it comes to any upper echelon opponents. Granted, even though that you did beat Adrian Broner and Keith Thurman, Keith Thurman gave a much tougher fight to you than Adrian Broner. And then Keith Thurman was also injured that night when Pacquiao fought him, so... Keith Thurman, you know, he could have, like, you know, if he was fully healthy 100%, he would have been knocked out Pacquiao. But the problem is just that Pacquiao, you know, he was given, like, an easy fight against a less uh, healed Keith Thurman. So, you know, I don't blame Keith Thurman for just taking the payday and trying to put on a decent performance, but... Um, I think with what Pacquiao's trying to do, he, he's just trying to take advantage of what's in front of him. And I just don't see how him being the WBA champion is going to help him any longer. Because he knows that <laughs> him and Errol Spence would not last as much as him and Terrence Crawford. <laughs> and I think either way, Pacquiao's going to have a death wish to him when he fights either of these two guys. But the problem is, who's going to get there to him? And I think with Terrence Crawford, if he's able to really just beg to Bob Arum, please make this fight happen. That could happen. Because Bob Arum, he, he's trying, like, he's been talking so much smack to Terrence Crawford recently. I forgot to even make a video on his nasty comments towards Crawford to say, oh, I've lost more I, I I've lost more money on Terrence Crawford. I could build a house off of yeah yeah off on Beverly Hills uh, uh to go to vacation on. Just absolutely disrespectful. Bob Arum is not a good promoter. He he is by far the one of the most crappiest promoters in the sport of boxing and if anything he knows that Terrence Crawford is one of his last you know, marquee fight, fighters to, to give him that money of higher revenue. And and Bob Arum complains that Crawford's been, you know, losing money for him. But, but like, like, honestly, like, when it comes to the numbers, C Crawford is making millions of views off of just simply top rank main, yeah, like, um, um, main event live stream, uh, fight cards, right? But the issue is just that Bob Arum, he's not doing his part to promote Crawford the right way as he should be. Because Crawford, he should be having, like, massive pay-per-view fights. Even though he only had, like, one pay-per-view fight, I think, against Julius Ndogo, which that didn't really do that much. And the American fight, uh, that, that did, like, I think, like, at least 300,000 pay-per-view buys. It's not bad, but it's just, like... Crawford, he could do better. You know what I'm saying? Crawford should be raking in 600,000, 800,000 pay-per-view pay buys. And I know that 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 um, many people would definitely buy that that many pay-per-views to get to give Crawford that type of money. But it's just Bob Arum's fault for for being such a crappy promoter. And I actually put the blame on Terence Crawford for, for like for still sticking with Bob Arum for all these years where. You deserve more money, but guess what? Bob Aaron's not giving it to you because it's him. It's not you. It's him. You claim to say that you want to have the best names on your resume, but you're not going to do it with a promoter that match makes that match makes you with a very low tiered 
a promotional performance fight with someone that is not at your level or that could be at your level and that could beat you, but it's like the promotions are not good. <laughs> See, I think Crawford definitely needs to go to PBC because if he does not go to PBC, he is screwing himself up a lot more and he is offering himself a much bigger uh, hole for disaster. And um, I think if he does not do that to go with Al Hammond, he is not going to have any bigger fights left to him. And he's just going to be sitting on the shelf being fed to someone that's going to beat him. I.E. Virgil, yeah, uh, uh, Virgil Ortiz or whoever that's, that's you know, going to probably come into the mix and try to beat Crawford and... I just, like, I just think, that, like, Terrence Crawford, like, you don't have that much time left. And, you know, uh, um, the time is now to, to just take your risk to go to PBC and see what Al Heyman can do for you. And I think Al Heyman, he would definitely set up, you know, the fights a lot easier because he has the connections to get these fighters to you. And, you know, most of the good fighters are on PBC. So, you know, he can... You know, go to PBC, get the fight with Manny Pacquiao, you know, which I'm pretty sure Al Heyman, he could drop that money. You know, Al Heyman, he's making a lot of money with Errol Spence. So if anything, yeah, the Manny Pacquiao fight can can easily be made. And Pacquiao, he like, he needs to honor that too. Um, you know, well, actually, no. <laughs> I keep forgetting, like, Terrence Crawford hasn't even fought that many good names at 147, but... If if it's possible, if Crawford could try to get to Pacquiao before Errol, then it's now a 50-50 split between him and Errol. Because, like, ah. Because if you think about it, Crawford needs to have that that belt, or else if, if, if Errol gets that belt, then it's all over. Errol is going to be a 70-30 A-side, yeah, A-side, you know opponent and he's going to choose whatever the hell he wants for this fight and it's not going to be good for Terrence so Ter- Terrence is not making any big moves you know in the coming months and and he's making himself look a, a lot worse by by sticking with Bob Arum and making the more crappier decisions to make a much more harder transition to try to get the fight made between him and Pacquiao but let me, yeah, yeah, um, let me move subjects or move topics to Sean Porter. Sean Porter could easily wash everything out of his path because he is Crawford's mandatory. And if Sean Porter wants to, yeah, if he wants to push for that mandatory slot to be made to say, hey, you need to go fight Sean Porter or else guess what? You're never going to fight Pacquiao or Errol Spence because if Sean Porter wants to fight you, then you have to honor it. And then Sean Porter can easily, you know, win the case with having Crawford having his belt stripped if he, yeah, if he shall refuse to fight Porter. And then, you know, Porter can just go straight after, <laughs> like, you know, Errol Spence, Manny Pacquiao, all these fights that he knows that he can probably, you know, give a good fight to. But yeah, I think, I think, uh, I think Crawford's next fight is going to have to be with Sean Porter and, Boy, that that is going to be the 50-50 split of the biggest fights of 2020. But, I mean, look, the year's almost up, so I don't think uh, that that's really going to be realistic. But, twenty yeah, 2021, that, that's going to be a war. Um, him and Sean Porter are going to definitely be dropping bombs on each other. And I just think if Porter does upset Terrence Crawford, um, yeah, it's over for Crawford. I mean, you know, his only, yeah, his only, like, I mean, he can definitely rematch Porter for the belt if he really wants to, but, you know, Bob Arum, oh, I don't, I don't believe in rematches, but yet, uh, Tyson Fury and Deontay Walder had their rematch, and Fury cheated against Walder, and now he's trying to avoid Walder in the third trilogy fight, knowing that he said from the first fight, Walder is a dangerous opponent. He damn near killed me. So, up the scale, beat him. 
and then you just run away. Absolute asshole and a a total disgrace to boxing. You need to like yeah, you need to be thrown in jail and like literally executed. Like, you know, you almost killed someone in the ring. But either or, Sean Porter is going to be a, a massive wild card in this pick. And I think uh, if Terrence Crawford does lose to Porter, he needs to have a rematch clause. Because his, his WBO belt is going to make him... Well, I mean, <laughs> see, I don't even know if Terrence Crawford is really a champion at 147. Because, you know, other title belt organizations are are stating that the WBO is not a real title. And it's like, you know, is it really worth even having a rematch reporter if he does beat Crawford? Which, I mean, look, the WBO belt should still be valuable because it's still a belt. I don't know what else to really say, but if it's not considered a belt for undisputed status, then I guess Crawford's not really a champion and neither are any of the other champions that do hold that belt for men and women. But I'm going to, you know, respect it to say that it is a belt. But if he wants to get his belt back, if he were to lose to Sean Porter in devastating fashion, uh, yeah, get the belt back, beat his ass, go after (laughs) probably Errol Spence, knowing that he already has. (laughs) See, Errol Spence is going to do anything possible to have the A-side advantage over Crawford, and it's going to be so sad if Errol Spence gets to Manny Pacquiao before Crawford. <laughs> it's not going to be pretty. And Terrence Crawford, he he needs Pacquiao more than he needs a porter. Because if he been had the WBA belt, then guess what? Crawford would have been fought. Yeah, he would have been fought porter. But the issue is that Crawford, he's been screwed over by Bob Arum. You, like, like... These fights that could have been initiated off off of my vision of what Crawford would have done have never been made because of damn Bob Arum. Bob Arum is literally the slave owner lying to his slave ma- like like basically lying to his slave, i.e. <laughs> Terrence Crawford to say that that you're gonna be free tomorrow. But then the next day, he's not free. And then he keeps lying to him over and over and over. And then nothing happens. Because Bob Arum is a lying scumbag. And you know he has bad blood with these other promotional companies. I.e. PBC. Or probably any other promo- promotional company on the rise. But uh, um, but still, it's just that... Bob Arum, he's not giving he's not giving the big fights. And I'm just saying as a Terrence Crawford fan, get the hell out of top rank. You know, get out of your contract. Try to find a way to get get this buyout out of your contract. Leave, go to PVC, and then voila. You have everything set. You have everything set with your money, getting paid out, what you deserve, and then Al Heyman can give you what you want. And then, boom, get all the big fights and get out of boxing. That's it. I don't know what else to really say because I'm not trying to be rude towards Crawford because I know Jamel Herring, and I speak with him sometimes, and he's friends with Crawford, so I don't want to make a bad impression of myself. But it's like if Terrence Crawford, if you're listening to me, I just want you to please go to PVC, pull off the biggest Michael Jordan in the world, do a 360 dunk like you're gonna win like the NBA All-Star game or the finals. Take all the big fights. Beat Manny Pacquiao's ass. <laughs> that's gonna be easy. Yeah, that's gonna be easy. First round KO. And um after that, fight Sean Porter if he wants to fight you. I'm pretty sure he's gonna fight Terrence Crawford next, but either way, uh Get that belt and then hit the Errol Spence fight. Um, I don't think Errol Spence is going to have that much time left at 147. So, if anything, if, you know, like, let's just say Errol Spence does lose to Danny Garcia. Does that does that mean Danny Garcia is going to be let the new A-side? And then Terrence Crawford is going to still demand 
that BS 60-40 split in his favor? No, because Danny Garcia, he like he obviously sells mm-hmm. more than Crawford. So the only way for him to actually, you know, win in this you know, in this, you know, um, in this um, um, negotiation is that he needs to, you know, he needs to, um, um, whatchamacallit, get that belt and then he will be on his way to setting the equalizer if he's, yeah, if he so chooses to fight, um, Errol Spence or Danny Garcia, if Danny Garcia were to get past Errol Spence. But I think either way, it's just like, Terrence Crawford, he is in the trenches. He he does not have too much of an opening for him to grow, and I kind of feel bad for him because I don't know what else is really there for him other than you have to fight Manny Pacquiao next, or if Sean Porter, if he is activating that mandatory fight to be made, he has to fight him. <laughs> Honestly, it's just really sad because Crawford, you got screwed over, man. Top rank is literally like puppet and Crawford, and and I just think like this is going to be the major twist in Crawford's career if he does not get what he wants, and he's basically just a sitting duck. That that's really what he is, and you know I respect Crawford, but Crawford, you need to find you know the right opening and take it, and I think him going to PBC would be the right move, so that way he's not getting screwed over by Bob Arum. Bob 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 Barham has has uh, pro- proven himself to be the biggest douchebag um in all of promoters and that that's definitely been co-signed by guys like Floyd Mayweather and Dana White. So either way it's like Crawford, you know what Bob Barham's doing doing to you and I, and I would I would hope that you know that Bob Barham Bob Barham does not have your best interests. He even stated like he doesn't give a shit about you, so why even try to stay with him? <laughs> and, you know, I guess like reports say like he has two fights left with top rank, um, which would be October 2021. And then that's it. No, get the hell out of the contract. Go straight to PBC. Do some form of some form of a buyout. I don't care because Bob Aram, he is going to feed you to the wolves of somebody that is ready to take your title away. And be the brand new boogeyman, or more so, be the brand new poster child of his top rank enclave. And then he will just use you just like anyone else. He takes you in and then he spits you out. And that's really what Bob Aram is going to do. And I fear that if Crawford runs into that trap, he is going to be dumb enough to take it and then do what? You're not going to do anything, Crawford. Like, you're actually wasting your career being with top rank, knowing that they don't have your best interests. But at least Al Heyman, he he will have your best interests because he's in it to give the consumers what, what we demand for fights and to give fighters what they want. So for, for So for Crawford to even be this naive or to be in denial of not taking these big offers... It's 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 not good. He he really needs to leave. So so that's really what I have to say about this whole Terrence Crawford situation. Uh, let me know in the comments of what you think that Terrence Crawford needs to do. Um, I think Terrence Crawford needs to leave PBC, and uh, yeah, he, he, he like he really needs to definitely get these fights, man. Cause he's gonna get screwed over. I just have a bad feeling off the, yeah, off the back of my head that a guy like Virgil Ortiz or Jerron Ennis or whoever is on the come up after Sean Porter and all these guys are out of his way, they're they're like yeah they're like um they're coming for Terrence Crawford's head. They're they're definitely wanting to kill um, Crawford's you know career, take out his um his um legacy. <laughs> And sadly, that that's just something that I don't want to see because <laughs> I just want to see this <laughs> Terrence Crawford versus Errol Spence fight. But either way, you know, everything's like a wild card. You don't know if Errol Spence is going to lose to Danny Garcia tonight. Also, uh, shout out to both of those fighters. That's going to be a Caribbean showdown. 
Um, can't wait for that. That 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 is absolutely gonna be a damn good fight. I I I, I think I already made my prediction on that, but um, yeah. Um, I just wanted to make this video and share my thoughts, but. Yeah, man, that that's basically what I have to say. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this. Um, do you do you think um, Terrence Crawford needs to make those moves? And uh, yeah, we'll cook it up later. All right, thank you guys very much, and I will see y'all later. Bye.